It's a fantastic program for the fact that uh, we we look at all aspects of the trade. We we go into refrigeration and uh, and heating. We go into the sheet metal and learn the fabrication and pattern developments. We teach them welding. We uh, we go into the latest technology such as going into BIM drawing and uh, AutoCAD and Revit and we take in different uh, programs that actually help uh, that the contractors are taking up now. Recently we're starting to come up where we're starting to do 3D scanning. So we take the latest technology that we're using on a day in and day out basis. We try and spearhead that teaching so that we can teach that to the students, that they can benefit the industry and uh, take it one step further as time goes on. Tell us about the facility, Dan. The facility is, uh, I don't know if you want to say it's not brand new, it's uh, just coming up on conclusion, but uh, the training coordinator before me, had, they designed it in such a way where each of the classrooms are designed to be able to walk out into the labs and instead of disturbing anybody in the hallway or getting interrupted, it's de developed in such a way where they go right to their work. And we have uh, about six different classrooms and we have about four or five different labs and uh, so we find that we can put all the latest technology. Um, here we have our fabrication that we're sitting in now where we can do flashing and architectural sheet metal on one side, ductwork development and build, uh, learn how to measure, make and hang ductwork. Uh, the other facility is the welding lab that we just finished up, um, which is kind of bringing us to a conclusion of finishing all the touches on our facility. Uh, the tab lab is a uh, state of the art where we're just kind of finish up on a few different things and get them ready for certifi certifying tab uh, apprentices and journeymen that come along. And as well as our service lab, we got a state of the art service lab that we're able to teach multiple different things on different types of equipment that we use day in and day out or install or troubleshoot day in and day out. Um, like I said, most people don't know what sheet metal is, so I get the opportunity to explain it to them. And then I tell them how they can get into the program and how it'll benefit them. Uh, you start out with a small wage of $23 an hour, and by the time five years is out, you're about $55, $56 an hour. And on the day they start the apprenticeship, they start their health care, they start their retirement, and they start vacation pay. I mean, it's, you're a little nervous, especially as a female coming in, but you know, meeting the guys and learning the work, it's really not that difficult at all for me to do compared to anybody else that's doing it. So it's a lot of fun. Every day's fun. Well, my thoughts on basically working in a, in a field that are predominantly men is it's, it's a great experience even for the female. I mean, we can do the work just as good, if not better. Um, <laughs> uh, definitely, it's nothing to be scared of. I mean, it, we raise kids, we have babies, we get married, we take care of households. I mean, why couldn't we go out and build buildings and, and make the same kind of money and do the same kind of wonderful things that these guys are doing, and if not better, you know? I mean, there really is no reason why a woman couldn't get in this field and, and thrive and make really good money. I mean, I, what am I really supposed to be doing? Teaching or working at a library or something else? I mean, that doesn't pay anything. Why not make the same amount of money your husband does? And that way you can support his butt if he's unemployed, you know? I mean, why not be an equal? So. And by being in the apprenticeship, it's a, a great opportunity to actually earn while you learn. You're, you're living off of a, a decent livable wage and your schooling is essentially free. Um, by the time you graduate, you have zero student debt. The facility is top notch. It's top of the line. Um, everything that we have to work with here is stuff that works. Um, it's, in other words, it's kind of like a dream come true being able to go to such a nice, a nice school and nice, have it, such a nice training facility. Whether or not you're coming right out of high school, whether or not you're still in high school, whether or not you're, you know, going through a college education at the moment, you're kind of uh, not really set on what you want to do. It's never too late to get into an apprenticeship program. I mean, we have people from 18 all the way up through 40, 50 years old as first year apprentices. It's a big learning curve. It's, a, it's definitely a lot different than, than um, you know, the learning curve in the military and such. Uh, it's something that I, that I constantly have to get used to. I'm not, I'm not securing anything. I'm not doing anything with guns anymore. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working with my hands more and, um, and uh, learning how to do 
do a trade. I, I think what people don't understand is that everything that, that gets built, that comes up, somebody did that. A person did that. And I think a lot of times we kind of overlook the, you know, a building coming up and, and we look up and we don't really notice the things, you know, the, the craftsmanship and all the things that it takes to get those things up in the sky, to get the duct hung, to get everything uh, balanced and proportioned and, and, and making sure that everything works uh, optimally. Scratch a half inch and a half inch. right on the edge there and then I pressed the pedal down and there was a little bit of that's good though that section that's, right there yeah that'll okay. be okay right there so and trim out the elastic that way. So you can whether or not to cut that angle at a 45 degrees with your other angle. Or to spread it way out, okay? And once you get that spread where you want it, that doesn't matter. Okay, that's basically how what you'll find out is those center lines are 90 degrees. You're doing it right from the angle. As long as you stay 90 degrees to your and you're right. We wouldn't have the answer on some uh, this book goes back to like You could use your, say, a six inch run. We take our circumference rule and stretch it out 31 and 3 eighths, lay it out on a piece of mesh. And in this case, we have one inch, three quarters, and half on both sides. So the gate, the little ball will float up and float down. Two. I'm just going to do a lap. Okay, let me do a shoot as well itself, but it might even shoot behind it. Maybe a little faster wire speed. A little faster wire speed once it turned it up.
your subconscious, you would actually four foot from here. The angle and the height of the lens. And you're going to put your hand on it and watch. Upward, nice trim. Okay, again, 90 degree angle. Oh, you got, I might, I think I put it back in my drawing board there. There's not a lot of room. You had to make fittings like that, try fitting 